Lately, you may have noticed that a lot of grinders are hitting the market with the ability to adjust the burr RPM. So the topic of grinder RPM and its effects on the coffee ground and subsequently brewed is something I've been wanting to get into for a while. That level of control was part of the reason I searched out a grinder with adjustable speed, and eventually landed on the Legome P64, which has the ability to grind from 200 to 1400 RPM, and that's a pretty respectable range. So I decided to put together a set of tests on 200, 800, and 1400 RPM on both filter and espresso, looking at how the variable of burr speed changes things like extraction speed, yield, and of course flavor. And just a quick warning, the first two sections of this video are pretty data heavy, so if you're less interested in the process and more interested in what the data actually revealed, you can jump ahead to the data breakdown, I've put the sections down below, but with that said, let's jump into it. For the filter testing, I used the Aurea V3 Dripper, Kalita 185 filters, and 15 grams of medium roast coffee. Each was brewed at 190 degrees using a 40 gram 30 second bloom and two 100 gram pours with a swirl at the final drawdown. As you can see on each round of the filter tests, the brew time consistently increased with the burr speed, but not massively. And when testing the extraction yield, there were slight jumps in the same pattern. Then, through incremental grind changes, I align the brews as close as possible in time regardless of RPM, in an effort to remove the factor of contact time. These results produce cups that across the burr speed spectrum had slightly less extraction yield differences but still produced a similar cup profile to the set using the same grind setting at different speeds. On 1400 RPM, the burrs produced a finer grind distribution, resulting in cups that were more complex but verging on slightly bitter. On 800 RPM, as you'd expect, the grinds had less fines, and produced a more balanced cup, essentially what I would call the average ideal, with bitter and sweet blending nicely. On 200 RPM, with the least amount of fines, the cup produced the highest clarity of all three speed settings, really allowing the nuances to shine through, and a higher level of brightness. Since espresso's brew time is obviously much shorter than your standard filter or pour over, I decided to dial in all the shots tested to a very specific brew time to make sure we're looking at actual grinder speed differences and not the differences in contact time. So for these tests, I used the GS3MP set to 199 degrees and 17 grams of a medium roast coffee. Each shot was brewed with relatively short ramp up to 6 bars, and dialed in to 33 to 34 grams in 23 to 25 seconds to avoid having contact time throw off any of the differences from the grind. After pulling 5 shots per grind speed, the results showed a clear pattern opposite to the filter tests. As the RPM increased, the extraction yield made a slight decrease. In terms of flavor, and as you may already expect, each set of shots had different cup profiles. On 1400 RPMs, the espresso produced had a lot of upfront sweetness and heavy body. On 800 RPMs, the shot produced was the most balanced, and what I would consider your average or standard espresso in terms of flavor and body. On 200 RPMs, the shots had the highest amount of flavor clarity, with an increased level of acidity. Alright, so I know there's a lot of numbers in this video and they go by rather quickly, so let's go into the breakdown of what I was able to learn from all this data. Much like I already anticipated, and is relatively broadly accepted, lower RPMs create a more consistent grind size distribution, i.e. less fines. In the case of filter coffee, lower RPMs produced a faster average brew time, and the lowest average extraction. Not a bad extraction, but about half a percent lower than the coffee ground at the max RPM. Without the fines filling the space between the boulders, you're going to get a quicker brew time overall, which means less contact time between the water and the coffee, plus fines are easier to extract, which in turn creates just a lower extraction. When dialed in for total brew time, the extraction gaps were lower, but the same flavor differences persisted. Faster being sweetest, medium being more balanced, and slowest being the cleanest. But interestingly enough, when I switched over to espresso, the results flipped. With the shots dialed in to as close to the same yield and contact time as possible, the higher extractions were produced on the lowest RPMs. 
Again, much like the filter results, it wasn't by a large margin, I would say about half a percent. The best explanation I have for this phenomenon is when brewing espresso, the more consistent grind size allows for a more even flow of water through the puck, which results in less chance or instances of channeling or extraction defects. This is essentially the theory behind the turbo shot, which is only about 15 seconds long, but can still get you extraction percentages well into the 20% range. So as I wind all this down, the one topic that still needs to be discussed is whether getting a grinder with this type of adjustment is worth it. Honestly, I would say it's generally a fun thing to have, but I've had plenty of amazing cups without that type of control. And it's purely just something for those coffee nerds looking to take the next step into extreme social isolation. Okay, that's a joke. Kind of. Granted, it does make some differences, and considering these results, a point can be made for using certain RPMs for certain copies and certain methods. For those chasing clarity in all of its forms would likely benefit from low RPM options, and if your preferences are aimed at maximizing sweetness or body, faster RPMs can definitely get you there. But in the mid-range is where you're going to be getting the best of both worlds, and honestly, for me, that's where I'm going to be staying about 90% of the time. And the other 10% would be split between grinding slower for clarity and faster for body, and dependent mostly on the coffee being used. And finally, a couple other small notes around the topic of grind speed. For one, more speed directly correlates to less retained grinds. This is just physics, because the burrs are literally whipping the grinds out of the chamber. And in my testing, contrary to what I read on a recent Barista Hustle article, I found higher speeds creating more heat than slow, which does seem a little contradictory considering the ungodly amount of time it takes from start to finish. One hour later. Anyway, as I wrap all this up, I guess I should say that all these tests were done on obviously my grinder with my burrs and a single coffee but I do think the findings of how speed affects grind will ring true generally. But with all that said, it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. Do you own a grinder with RPM adjustments or are you considering one? If you do own one, have you done any tests and what have your results or experiences been? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And finally, a big thank you to my August Patreons, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horison, Rose, Squeegee, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Tony, Matt, Jason, Cameron, Robert, Underdunk, Jeffrey R., Jeff Roth, Mike, Byron, Tyler, Jose, BJK Cafe, JRC, Absolute, Stephen, Home Barista Coach, Keefe, John, Gumby, Alexis, Barista Michael, Arthur, Techcom Advisors, Ed, Happy Camper, Keith M., Gary M., Devo H., Ben, Monster04, Bruce, Lilac, Brooks, Henry, Sam, Kang, PY, Sergey, Matthew, Miroslav, Malkonig, Schlack, Shrey, Steven, and Andrew C. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.